Today I'm testing web application development on this M1 MacBook Air, M1 Max MacBook Pro, and the M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now you might have already seen speedometer scores for this machine, the new M2, and they are impressive. For those of you that haven't seen it, here you go. Here's the Chrome score for the M1, M1 Max, and M2, and here's the score in Safari for the M1, M1 Max, and M2. Notice the M2 is destroying everything else in its path, and so far it has the highest score I've ever seen. So if that's all you wanted, there you go. You got your speedometer tests. But in this video, I wanna dive a little bit deeper. I wanna do some comparisons between different popular frameworks like Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, Solid, and compare those to vanilla as well to see how quickly or not quickly they perform. And we're gonna compare these three machines on all those frameworks. Sounds like a lot to do, doesn't it? Well, it's gonna be a lot of work for me, but hopefully not for you, because I'm gonna edit this video. And I'm gonna show you a benchmark suite that tests all these on your local environment. Now there's a little bit of setup. I'll show you where to get the stuff. I'll show you how to run it. And then we'll run it here on these machines and see the scores. So without further ado, why does everybody always say that? I don't know, let's just, let's just start. All right, now check it out. Here's the library by Stefan Kraus. Not a library, but the benchmark. It's called js-framework-benchmark on GitHub. There's the URL, you can check it out. And this is crazy, because I've never seen anything like this. There are currently about 60 frameworks in this repository. There's automated tests that run benchmarks for each one of those frameworks. And there's the official results page that you can check out for different versions of Chrome. Here's the latest one for Chrome 103. Look at this table, beautiful. You can check this out, I'll link to it down below. And here are the times. Now, he ran this on a MacBook Air M1. Uh, the previous test, I believe he was running on a Linux machine. Yeah, Razorblade Advanced. Now he switched to the MacBook Air M1 for the latest set of tests, which I have right here. Same configuration. I'm gonna see if my numbers match his. But look at this, we got Vanilla JS. Uh, we got um, Solid. Some of these I'm not even familiar with. I've never even seen some of these frameworks. But obviously, Angular, React, Vue, are on that list and Svelte. So I'm gonna run this for just a few of these. I'm gonna show you how to do that in case you wanna try this out yourself. Basically, you just follow the instructions that are right on the README page here. So I've cloned this repo to all three of these machines. And the next step is to start up the benchmarking server. That's all over here in the description. I have the same version of Node, same that's documented here, 16.14.2 on all three of these machines. I configured that using NVM, by the way. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video on how to install Node using NVM. Check that out. And uh, he's got some old steps for this benchmarking experience and he's got some new steps. The old steps is where you can build the frameworks and every single project from scratch on your machine, which is another way to see how fast these things are. I'm not gonna do that today because for the newer instruction set, uh, he already pre-builds these for you using the version of Chrome and you can just download the built applications for each framework. So here we can download the built.zip for each one of the releases of Chrome right here. So Chrome 103, Chrome 102, 101, 100 and so on. I want the 103, build.zip. Now I've already downloaded this on all these and then you simply just copy that build zip file to your working directory and say unzip build.zip. All right, and then yeah, you wanna overwrite, so just say all, boom. All right, I did the same thing on all three of these. Now the next thing to do is just say npm start, and this will kick up the benchmarking local server on port 8080, and your test can look at that port, run the application in Chrome automatically. Everything is automated, it's pretty cool. So we pop open a new tab, and here we just say, npm run bench but if you do this it's gonna run all 60 frameworks and the benchmarks for all 60 of them and what is the benchmark by the way here's about the benchmarks right here it says it's gonna run these tests create a thousand rows no warm-up replace all rows with warm-up five iterations partial update select rows swap rows remove rows create many rows 10,000 rows no warm-up append rows to a large table well 
you kind of get the idea. For each and every framework that's gonna do these things, measure the time for each one of these things, average the time, and then tabulate everything. So pretty thorough, and I gotta give it to him. To keep this updated has gotta be a lot of work, probably a full-time job. Also, as a side note, we're not only gonna see the differences between these three machines, we're also gonna see the differences between the frameworks. So if you ever wondered which framework is faster, we might get an answer. All right, obviously running this whole thing is gonna take a very long time. I think he mentioned it's gonna take 12 hours if you run the whole thing. I wanna run, let's just do one test right now. So there are two different types of frameworks that, or two different categories of frameworks that he lists. So if we open this up in Visual Studio Code, there's keyed frameworks and there's non-keyed frameworks. I wanna do keyed frameworks. These include all the ones I mentioned before. These are the frameworks that use a randomly generated number and they keep track of all the nodes in the DOM. Those are the keyed ones. And that's most of the popular frameworks anyway. So in order to do that, we do npm run bench and then we pass it what frameworks we wanna do. For example, here, keyed vanilla JS. Let's do that one, okay? All right, we've got three machines here. I think this is a good job for none other than the Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Here's a little tool I built to execute things at the same time. It's got three fingers on it. Fun little thing called the Schwarzenegger. All right, we're gonna press enter at the same time and let's go. <laughs> Oops, that was a misfire. Misfire, I'm gonna have to do that again because, well, I didn't start the server on these two other machines. I need to do that. <sighs> Second time is not as fun as the first time. I don't know what that's referring to. Um, let's go. Boom. And off they go. Now, if you watch this, uh, basically it's using a web driver to kick up Chrome and execute the tests, deploy the application to it, and run all the tests automatically. It's pretty cool to watch. I would not recommend it unless you like watching grass grow, which I don't know, maybe you do. There's a lot of you out there. So this is gonna take a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. All right, it's almost done and it's just gathering all the final data and calculating the results. I think they all finished kind of at the same time. Um, the difference was kind of hard to notice. Let's take a look at some of the preliminary numbers here, okay? For the M1 MacBook Air, the vanilla CI startup time, uh, I guess the median number is what we'll look at. It has the minimum and the maximum. The medium is 1869, M1 max 1872, and the M2 is 1804. I would think that the M2 would be a lot faster, but it's not that much faster for this particular test. And the M1 and the M1 max have similar performance, and that is because this is a single core operation. Like All these are single core operations, so they're very close because even though the M1 Max has a lot more cores overall than the M1, the cores are pretty much the same on these two machines, whereas the cores should be newer on the M2 and it's reflected. Now, let's get on with the bigger test, which is gonna be more frameworks. All right, so we're gonna do Vanilla.js, we'll include that. Angular, we'll do React, we'll do Vue. I wanna do Solid. Is it Solid or Solid.js? Let's take a look at the frameworks folder. It's just Solid, okay. And then Svelte. By the way, I'm doing a few of these, not all of them, obviously, because there's so many. But if you are interested in even more details, uh, more frameworks compared, let me know in the comments down below. And then there's U. What the heck is U? Does anybody know what U is? Ah, psh, never heard of that one. There's Preact. Not gonna do Preact. I don't think Preact is as popular as React. Well, I know it's not as popular as React, but does anybody use Preact? Hmm. Oh, Knockout. That's gonna be pretty slow, but. Knockout was my go-to back in 2010. That was a nice framework. There's Ember. I know that some people still use Ember. It's gonna add running time. You know what, I'm just gonna do these. Vanilla JS, Angular, React, Vue, Solid, and Svelte. I've got it all set up. Now there's one more thing I wanna add, and I wanna add the time command at the beginning of all these to see how long all the tests take to run on each one of these machines. Just the total number at the very end. All right, Schwarzenegger, do your work. <laughs> one, two, three. Ah, this might take a bit of time. I'll be back later. Ah, all right, folks, we've got some results here. So this is not what I expected. I expected the M2 to do a little bit better than this. It's better, but it's not that much better. Here are the results for the final time, the total time that this took to run on the M1 MacBook Air, 18 minutes and 36 seconds. M1 Max MacBook Pro, 18 minutes, 26 seconds. So 10 seconds faster. And on the M2, 17 minutes and 48 seconds, almost a whole minute faster than the M1. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much faster, but a whole minute off is not bad. 
Now, what else is cool about this particular implementation of this benchmark is that you get to generate your own table of results so you don't have to dig through the console logs or json files you get a nice pretty table to show you the results let's go over these and i did find a couple of these surprising so let's go through it now first of all all across the board vanilla js was the fastest no surprise there's no framework there so it was pretty fast then as far as framework speeds go after vanilla js the second fastest one was solid then view then svelte then Angular, and then finally the slowest was React. In fact, React was slow enough to give some red marks over here in the select row and the swap rows benchmarks and the update every 10th row for 1000 rows, five cycles benchmark. Like I said, these are pretty detailed, good stuff. Now, as far as timings between the machines and the processors, if we take a look at the create rows result for vanilla JS, the M1 MacBook Air had 67, and that's, by the way, the number of milliseconds to do that operation. The M1 Max beat it at 45 milliseconds, but the M2 came in at 57, much slower than the M1 Max. So that was an interesting result. And in fact, that create rows operation came in slower for every framework on the M2 than the M1 Max. It was faster than the original M1 on the MacBook Air. So. Yeah, interesting results there. Now, if we go down to the next test, which is replace all rows, that's where the M2 was faster by a few milliseconds. And you can see that in the results right there. Partial update, the M1 was faster than the M1 Max, and the M2 was faster than the other two. Now let's take a look at that one score where Angular and React did pretty poorly all across the board, and that was swap rows. That's incredible how how much longer it took Angular and React to do it than the other frameworks. So something definitely to be optimized in React and Angular as for framework developers, not for me to do. <laughs> I guess it is open source. I could do it, but today I don't I don't know. I just I just don't feel like doing that today. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right getting on with it. Swap rows was much better on the M2 than the other two machines, and the M1 is better than the M1 Max on that particular benchmark. There's some interesting results here all across the board. Now, what about the startup metrics? This is the Lighthouse with mobile simulation, and the M2 is not looking good here for the consistently interactive uh, benchmark here. However, for the main thread work cost, that's the total amount of time spent doing work on the main thread, that one it did really well in. That's the most important metric out of all these, I think, to look at. And the surprise here is that the M1 did better in vanilla JavaScript than the M1 Max in this particular test, just by a few milliseconds. But the M2 did better all across the board in this test. So this does show that the M2 is a powerhouse. Now this is the MacBook Pro M2. There's also the MacBook Air coming shortly. So there you go, folks. Hopefully this was entertaining or educational or both. If it was, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more tests like this and other weird and fun stuff we do here. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.